Yeah, I definitely found evidence that um, a human being is not necessarily, you know, manufacturing consciousness within themselves, but they're actually more like an antenna, you know, um, tapping into a field of information that, uh, that is a fundamental field that produces the material world from um, subatomic particles to the forces that holds them together and uh, gravitational uh, forces at the cosmological level and stars and galaxy, meaning, meaning that there's a fundamental field of information at the Planck scale, so at the scale much, much, much smaller than the atoms. Mm -hmm. um, from which everything emerges and returns to. And, um, and as it emerges, it creates more and more complexity uh, because it's holographically connected. Um, and so it, uh, it creates like a fractal iteration of complexity. And then eventually it produces a, a being with a level of complexity high enough that it becomes self-aware, meaning that it actually is gathering information and sending information back into that field in a, in a feedback, feed-forward loop, which is self-awareness, you know. So it, so it, 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 it describes uh, consciousness and, and, you, and a human being as something vastly different than what we thought before. I think that, you know, these concepts that we're all one uh, have been in the world for a long time. You know, many masters, many traditions around the world talk about this. Um, but I think that now what we're arriving to is that science is discovering that that's not just a nice spiritual concept, but it's actually the way things are really uh, are, you know, and that uh, the reality, atomic structure, that the universe works because it is connected, not because it's disconnected. Meaning that, you know, you can't really account for biology, for even the complexity of one blade of grass with all the biological life in it and like all the microbes and bacteria. Um, you can't account for that with random functions with a random universe that where things um, kind of like bump into each other in some random way and if they're lucky enough all of a sudden you know it works um, that doesn't add up like if you try to calculate um, you know the complexity of a blade of grass um, and uh, then try to figure out how long on the random function it would take for that to somehow just miraculously happen, um, you exceed the time of the beginning of the universe by billions and billions and billions of years, right? So uh, it's not, you know, and the human being is vastly more complex, for instance, a hundred trillion cells, each one made out of a hundred trillion atoms. There's about a a thousand billion billion chemical change in your body every second. I mean, this stuff is, is staggering. And it doesn't just happen on the random function. The problem is that, um, you know, the, the, um, the, the leading views is that if it's not, on, it's not random, then there's some god, you know, uh, head somewhere that's organizing all this, and there's another and there's another solution, and the the other solution is that there's feedback of information in the in the universe that everything is connected through this fundamental field of information that was discovered in quantum theory, um, in quantum field theory, uh, a, a while ago. It was discovered that there's a a, a a fluctuating field 
uh, at the Planck scale, billions of times smaller than the atom, um, it's called a vacuum fluctuation, and, and it's extremely dense in energy, extremely dense in, in information. And um, but it, the numbers were so staggering, the, the 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 density of energy in that field was so staggering when it was discovered, 10 to the 93 grams per centimeter cube, which is 39 orders larger than if I took all the stars in the universe and put them in a centimeter cube. The, there's still 39 zeros missing to that number to make it the density of that field. So it's so most physicists ignored it um, until I pulled it out of the closet, dusted it off, and, uh, and, and, and said, well, maybe this really incredible energy field is the source of reality. Until then, uh, it was thought that that field is incoherent and irrelevant because it's just like a background noise. And, um, you know, I showed that absolutely not. Actually, it's it produces high level of coherency, and where it does, we call it matter. We call it the material universe. I think we're ready to 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 take in those concepts, and they're going to become more and more popular because we have scientific proof that it's like that. And so, what I'm saying is that. Spiritual concepts, and I say this all the time, spirituality is just physics we haven't understood yet. Yeah. So it's not a question of, of science and religions to shake hands. It's a question that, you know, spiritual concepts usually, in some cases, have a base in science, and, and, and it just hasn't been understood under scientific um, uh, theory, and but but as it becomes understood that way, then the dogma goes away, because yeah. now you don't have to like rely on some yeah. beliefs or some faith, but you actually know that that's the way things are because the science is showing you. Right. <laughs> well, we have to learn the, the fundamental principles of physics that makes those concepts um, uh, true. So, for instance, um, you know, by in the equations I wrote, which are now the more precise uh, prediction of the radius and mass of protons and electrons on the planet, right? So, it's non-trivial. It's not just theory that has no meaning, it, it outputs very important values, and these values have been confirmed in laboratories, so the, the theory has been confirmed in laboratory, because m the values I gave for the radius of the proton turns out to be 4% 4, 4 smaller than the standard model predicted, and then when it was measured in, in the accelerator, um, it was found that my prediction is correct and the standard model is off. And so, so, so it gives correct values, but what's important is that in this, um, in this way, um, you know, it, um, it's, it's because the equation itself has the mass of all the universe in it, and it outputs the mass of only one proton, right? Basically, it's saying that, you know, everything is connected, everything is talking to each other holographically. There's, there's wormhole strings that connects everything. So, um, you know, what, um, what is clear there is that like, it's really changing the way we think of ourselves. And the way we think, you know, of God and, you know, like, um, like, you know, say if everything is connected, then everything is talking to each other. You know, the whole thing is, is and when you think of like the concept of God, you know, um, it says like, 
it's omniscient, right? It sees everything. It's omnipotent. It, it, and and it, it's omnipresent, right? Well, this equation is actually say that, but it says it's a field of information, right? That we're participating in. And so it changes the view of the religious beliefs dramatically. And, and you know, the, typically the, the church is not so excited about that. Yeah, so, so we have an online course, online courses you can take, and we started a whole community. There's all, over 90 countries involved, thousands of people are taking the course. It's really exciting. And, um, you know, because we have to provide a new way for people to get education, um, because uh, otherwise, um, the educational system is controlled by the same entities and um, some being religious, some being scientific and certainly some of the scientific uh, uh, organizations are very dogmatic. It's extremely difficult to actually get them to teach um, more, more um, recent uh, physics, more recent discoveries. I think they're kind of, they're starting to become aware of it. Um, I think they're, it's breaking up from inside these agencies as well because consciousness and you know evolution is not um, it, it doesn't segregate to only one group. You know, so so it, people are inside the military industrial complex, inside the religious uh, complex. Um, you know, are are actually. Um, starting to reach higher level of awareness, higher level of consciousness. And, um, you know, and so it's breaking up from the inside of these organizations. So I think that they're starting to realize. And I think that's why there's some significant disclosure that's occurring about many programs that were running, you know, in secret behind closed doors in the military industrial complex, but as well in the religious uh, structures. The Vatican is starting to open its doors a little more. Uh, we might actually get access to the Vatican Library, at least to some of the Vatican Library at one point. You know, I think it's starting to open up. I'm very optimistic that uh, all this is going to break open in the next uh, five to ten years. That it's critical for people to know that there is an option out there. There is hope and there is a possibility for a, a whole new world to emerge out of it. Um, the technology that emerges from knowing that this energy density is present everywhere in the space, which includes the atoms because the atoms are 99.99999% space, right? Um, this energy is available to us, is a source of our consciousness, and our technology that we develop from it will probably free us completely from, you know, the lack of resources, from having to war to, you know, uh, get resources from each other, or to, and as well, free us from the surface of the planet. It leads directly to gravity control, um, you know, to our capacity to travel through our solar system, travel through the stars in our galaxy. I mean, I mean, the sky is not even the limit. You know, it's beyond the sky. It's like, it's a next step in the evolution of our civilization to discover this field of information and to actually learn to use it, interact with it, uh, and manipulate it in such a way that it, allows us to overcome gravity and overcome acceleration and so on. Do you think that you and me, we are going to see this wonderful war? I think we are. I think it's going to happen very quickly. We're, you know, there's a lot of research and development that's being done into how to engineer this field. And there's already some very exciting success stories. Uh, and so I think, 
you know, and, and science fiction has always been ahead of science. Like many things were in science fiction long before we had them, like cell phones and, um, you know, refrigerators and submarines and all this was invented in science fiction and then it was realized. And so when, if you want to know what our world is going to look like in the future, you can look at science fiction because that means somebody thought about it and that means it's going gonna, it's gonna to manifest itself. And um, so, you know, when you think of Star Trek and you think, uh, you know, their ships and their capacity to go around and um, opening wormhole mouth and going through wormhole and all this, um, we're, we're going to get there and we're going to get there pretty fast because it has to do with gravity control. So I think it's very exciting.